Um, if you have a question during the session and you don't want to forget it, go ahead and put it in the chat here. And if you're watching this recording on YouTube, send it in the comments and we will definitely get back to you with any questions, any answers that we have to your questions in those comments. Um, so thank you again for, for coming. My name is Caroline. I am known as the trucking business professor here at the Bobtail Help Desk. My goal is to help your trucking business thrive. If that sounds good to you, please sign up to get our blogs to your email. You can sign up on the Bobtail website. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, Bobtail Capital, um, and you can see all of the videos for the Bobtail Help Desk there. There's all kinds of resources there. Um, so definitely check out the blog and our YouTube channel. And my colleague Alejandra is going to send those links in the chat. Um, she even sent them before I could say that. So uh, that's how good the, the Bobtail team is. Um, and don't forget to join our Facebook group, the Bobtail Help Desk. That is where you can come and voice all of your questions about the industry and we will get our experts on the case for every single one of your questions and answer them as quickly as we can. Um, what does Bobtail do? We are a financial services company in the trucking industry. Um, our factoring service gets you paid the same or next day after delivering loads with no long-term contracts and no hidden fees. How awesome is that? You'll hear more about that um, after we're, we're, when we're talking about how to join um, uh, Bobtail and how to avoid freight scams and how we can help you avoid uh, freight scams and uh, fraud in this industry. Today I'm joined um, by uh, one of our sales managers, Rick Escobar. He is a veteran in this industry, has a lot of experience working with carriers, making sure they're getting everything that they need to from Bobtail and other service providers in the industry um, and working with those carriers to make sure that they're meeting their financial goals. So let's talk about fraud in trucking and the impacts of it on carriers. What is um, double brokering? Double brokering is the most common scam that we see in the trucking industry. Um, this is where a broker will find a carrier to haul freight. That's the normal part. Always starts out innocently enough. And then that carrier illegally double brokers or rebrokers that load to another carrier. Now, there are two ways that that ends, right? Either that carrier has the intention of paying the second carrier, and they do, but they obviously are not going to pay as much as they got paid for the load. So they're taking their own cut and then paying that carrier. Or what's even more likely and more devastating is that they sell the idea of that load to that second carrier and then they split and disappear um, without paying the carrier. And that leaves that second carrier who actually did all of the work for the load with the losses of hauling that load. That means fuel's not paid for. That means driver pay's not paid for. That means maintenance on your truck, not paid for. Um, and this can be particularly devastating to small trucking companies where you don't necessarily have all of the resources that bigger carriers have to pad margins, right? And so the impact of double brokering on the industry is huge. And when I say on the industry, I really mean on carriers. It costs carriers $100 million or more every single year, double brokering. Um, and we've seen double brokering, double brokered loads put carriers out of business. So this is an area of the industry that you really want to avoid like the plague and not be a part of in any way, shape or form. A quick note on blind loads and the potential risks around that. Blind loads can be legitimate loads. It, there's not, um, they are a little bit more complicated, but there's nothing fraudulent um, about the concept of a blind load. Basically what a blind load is, is trying to hide the origin of the load so that the receiver doesn't necessarily know who the direct, who the shipper is. Um, now that can be a little complicated because you might have one document from the shipper and a different document that you have to show the receiver and that can get a little bit tricky at times. But basically a blind load doesn't really have, it doesn't, it shouldn't hide anything about the carrier themselves. If you are delivering a blind load, the receiver should still be expecting you or your driver, your truck, your carrier. So don't let shady brokers and carriers convince you into 
trying to represent yourself as something you're not. If they say, hey, when you get to the to the um, receiver, um, make sure you tell them you are ABC trucking instead of Caroline's trucking. That's fishy. Don't don't fall for that. Um, that probably means that they're double brokering the load and that it's not a blind shipment. It's a double brokered load and they're not being truthful. So be really, really careful about that. So what are some of the ways that we can identify the warning signs of whether or not this is a scam? So we know what it looks like. We know that people misrepresent themselves in this industry and that they are trying to sell you or, or get you to haul a load that is not actually theirs um, to broker. So how can you know when that is the case? The first and probably most important and glaring representation of what a warning sign looks like is in the contact information. So the contact information, meaning the email that you're getting emailed about this load, the phone number that you're getting texts from or calls from, that should match the information for the broker on their website, on the FMCSA's website, on Safer, um, on the load board. All of that should match. So for example, if you're hauling freight for uh, ABC Freight Brokerage and they have on their website um, loads at abcfreight.com and you're getting emails from abcfreight at gmail.com about a load for that brokerage, that's a red flag. That's a warning sign. You should be getting emails from that specific email that's on their website or at least a person who works for that company and has a branded domain. So branded domain meaning not something like Yahoo, Gmail, and I know that a lot of people use Yahoo and Gmail in their businesses. It's not a good business practice, even for carriers. I know a lot of carriers will use a Gmail account to communicate with their customers, with their brokers. Um, a branded domain does not cost that much. Um, it's a very low cost. It's an annual cost usually that you have to pay if you're if you have G Suite. It's a very low monthly cost that you have to pay to have that branded domain on your Gmail. Um, and it should be part of your business practice to communicate with that email. Same, The same goes for a brokerage. So if you're seeing mismatched contact information, make a call. Go do a quick Google search, find the broker's website, give them a call, make sure the load is legitimate. So that's the first warning sign is if the phone numbers and emails don't match their information that's listed on other sites. Another, actually this would be uh, not so much a warning sign as um, the opposite. This is actually a good sign. If the broker is using a factoring service and you can verify that they're using a factoring service, that means that they have been, their business identity has been verified by the factoring service. We don't factor for brokers, but there are broker factoring services like Denim will have a know your business or know your customer process that verifies their identity. So that is something that can give you just a little extra layer of protection. So if they can prove to you that they're using a factoring service, then that's a good sign. Another tip is to use vetting websites. So freightvalidate.com, freightclub.us, these are two resources that we got from a broker that we talked with on one of our first, um, one of our first uh, events, online events that we did. And he provided these resources to everyone in those events. Um, freightvalidate.com and freightclub.us, these are free resources. You do have to go through a validation of your company and your identity and your information to join them. Um, I believe freightvalidate.com is actually open source. And so you can check out anyone's MC number. And they are specifically designed to help carriers and brokers avoid fraudulent actors in the freight industry, in the trucking industry. Um, and so definitely go on there, check out your MC, make sure you don't have any red flags on yours. And every time you're working with a new broker and even with a broker that you've worked with maybe a couple of times, but you're still not sure of, um, check them out on freightvalidate.com and then join freightclub.us. That is the one where you have to be verified and your identity will be verified. And that will be a great resource for you. It's sort of a hub, a network of industry leaders uh, where you can find potentially new customers if you're a broker, potentially new um, people to haul your freight. 
So really good resources right there. I want to know from you, if you can add in the comments, what are some signs of fraud in the industry that you've encountered? We've talked about contact information. We've talked about being vetted by third party services. Um, and we're going to talk about more signs and what to do and how to identify these scams in the moment. Um, but I want to hear from you if you have ideas of maybe some experiences that you've had when you've been caught up in a freight scam. Um, what were some of the signs that made you go, hmm, I wonder if this is legitimate. I wonder if I need to maybe do a little bit more due diligence to make sure this is okay. And now I want to bring on Rick uh, Escobar. He is a sales manager here at Bobtail and has tons of experience in this industry, has been with Bobtail since pretty much day one. Um, and has helped a lot of carriers with um, their financial goals and meeting those financial goals and helping them with their cash flow. Part of that cash flow is obviously getting paid for loads. And we all know that when you get caught up in a freight scam, getting paid is nearly impossible. Um, and so we're going to talk about how we can prevent it from happening. Unfortunately, when the fraudulent loads come to us, by the time they get to us, Right, Rick? That's kind of too late. Can you explain why that is? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Hello to everybody. And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, really, really a, a very important question. Uh, once once we uh, receive an invoice and it's a verified broker, right? Because you got to think about what, what steps are taking place, right? So the load comes from a legitimate source. And then it goes to someone that says, hey, I, I will move this load. But the reality is they have no intention in doing that. They are saying now they find someone else. That's where the double brokering comes in, right? So so this, the source is very legitimate. And if the broker has a good credit rating, any factoring company is going to be willing to make that payment, right? So one of the things that Caroline brought up earlier is that we have these websites, Freight Validate, for example, and um, you can actually go to Department of Transportation MC uh, verification and you type in the MC number. Now, what you need to look for is how old is that MC? OK. And when you look at the age of the MC, if it's a very recent MC, a week, two weeks, three months, six months. You want to ask for referrals. What have you, who has worked for you? Okay. Uh, typically, uh, a lot of these organizations, these are criminal organizations. They, the effect on the industry is estimated to be 700 million to a billion dollars in net losses to carriers on an annual basis. So these, these people are extremely savvy when it comes to uh, doing uh, the wrong thing to uh, take your money. So you have to do the, the legwork. You have to do the background check. You have to go to these freight validate. You have to do the MC. Don't take the word for it. When they offer you a load uh, that maybe should be uh, $3,000 and they're saying, no, no, we're going to pay you $4,000. You got to really ask yourself, why is that? Ask them, why are you willing to pay more? That's a really good point, Rick. That's a really big warning sign and, and something that we noted in the blog that we wrote for the for the um, website. Exactly right, Joseph. When the rate is too good to be true, if it looks like it's too good to be true, it probably is. Unfortunately, especially in this time in the industry and in, in today's market, um, if you're getting anything you know, above for you know a dry van, let's say, you're getting anything like, three, four, five dollars a mile, that's that's a red flag because that's not happening right now. No one is actually going to pay that. And I'll I'll go through kind of two scenarios where that would happen. One is where um, someone is trying to pass themselves off for a for a legitimate broker, right? So they take the load from the broker as a carrier and then they go back to the load board and they repost that load pretending to be the original broker right so that's one way that that can happen so now they're just completely misrepresenting themselves on the load board another way that this happens is that they take it from that broker they then have their own freight brokerage that they just created 
two weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe even a month ago. Um, some sometimes it takes you know months to catch these guys and to put them out of business and and get them off of get their MC taken down. Um, and they will put the load back on the load board as their real real brokerage um, that was not consented to by the original brokerage. So those are the two ways that that can happen. And and it's you're exactly right when you see a load that looks too good to be true, ask more questions, look at how long they've been in the business. Um, you know, they might just be doing a really bad deal for themselves. Um, who knows? But that's very unlikely. Most likely they're trying to trick a carrier into taking this load and so that they can get paid for it and then disappear. That's the unfortunate reality. So Rick, can you talk a little bit about what that relationship with a broker should look like? What should communication look like? And what are some warning signs in communication when they're delivering a load or they're negotiating a load? What are some of the warning signs that mm, this might not be legitimate? Yes. Communication is really the key to this, this whole thing, right? Uh, keep in mind, uh, everybody should have an ELD on their truck. You should, every. this is part of the course to do a normal business, right? Uh, so when, you, when you're talking to the broker, right? You're always wanting to, want to let them know, make them aware. Listen, my truck is equipped with the latest DLD. You can track my whereabouts at any time, et cetera, et cetera. If they say to you, don't worry about that. I'm not really worried about it. I trust you. That's huge, huge red flag. Okay. Any, anytime they are not interested in knowing where you're at, that should raise like really, really big red flags for you. Okay. If if you provide, for example, your uh, you have your carrier package, and your carrier package always needs to be very complete. Your carrier package should uh, consist of uh, your COI, your certificate of insurance. Your certificate of insurance should have the VIN number of all your trucks. Um, you need to provide a copy of your driver's license. You need to provide. Uh, your articles of incorporation, that's your, uh, um, that's how you sell your company to brokers, right? Again, any time that you might say, you know what, I, uh, I can uh, send you my driver's license later on, uh, and they're okay with that. Again, any steps uh, of the process that they want you to skip, and they're okay with it, you really have to start going, mm, why, why is that? Why are they willing to uh, for me to move this load without a certificate of insurance. Why do they want to see my articles of incorporation? Uh, that is not a good way of doing business. You ask them all of those same questions. Uh, okay, I see that your MC was, uh, uh, you know, started on this date. Do you have uh, your company registered with the Secretary of State in uh, Colorado or in Texas or in California, wherever they're at. Truly, truly, the only way to end this is through communication and asking questions and really verifying the information and not ignoring these huge red flags because this is what happens. People, oh, they never asked me for an ELD. They never asked me for my COI. Yeah, especially, um, I think that's so true when you're talking to someone and you've decided that, yep, I'm going to haul this load and they're not interested in the information about your company, that's probably because they're not providing the information for your company to the receiver to expect you um, because they have another carrier um, that they're supposed to receive. Um, especially, I talked about this a little bit, um, but people joined a little bit later. So I wanna reiterate that if anyone is ever trying to convince you to misrepresent yourself when you arrive at the receiving location or when your driver uh, arrives at the receiving location, that is a big warning sign. If they're saying, hey, make sure you say that you're from this carrier because, oh, because it's a blind shipment or, oh, because um, that's who was supposed to get it and I just don't want to confuse them anymore. Mm -mm. They should be always expecting you or your driver, your driver's license, your uh, VIN, all of that, your carrier name, um, they should be expecting you when you go to drop off that load. Um, the other part of the communication is when people are not so interested, when the person you're talking to on the phone is not so interested in 
what you have to say about your insurance, about your ELD and all that. And all of a sudden, as soon as you deliver that load, where's the paperwork? Where's the BOL? I need the BOL now. Send it to me now. Do it now. Text it to me. Oh, don't worry about email. Just text it to me. Um, and they start getting agitated. They started getting really anxious about getting that paperwork, getting that paperwork, getting that paperwork. You know why? Well, it's because the paperwork is the cash in hand. That is what you need to get paid for the load. That's what you send to your factoring company. That's what you send to the broker to get paid for that load. And so, of course, the scammer wants that paperwork as soon as humanly possible so that they can turn it in, they can get paid, and they can either pay you the pennies that they're, that they're paying you to, to deliver that load, or they can just skip town and never see you again and not have to pay you for that, for that load. So it's so, so important to keep an eye out for these kinds of warning signs. They're not interested in, if they're not interested at all, until you have the paperwork in hand and all of a sudden they're bothering you about it, that's that's a huge red flag. Carlos um, Yanez is putting a lot of good comments in the chat. I just want to shout that out, um, that they send you the rate confirmation without setting you up. Yep, exactly right. A broker will have a uh, clear process of how to set up carriers, right? You send the carrier packet, they will verify all your information. It should not take a split second, be like, yeah, 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 here's the rate con. Uh, go pick it up. It should not happen that fast. Logistics is a quick industry. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused um, that it, it, it is really quick that communication has to be so tight. There's you're fielding calls all day. You're fielding emails all day. So it can get it can get overwhelming and confusing. But if you're able to get a load and go out for that load in 30 seconds, five minutes, that's too fast. You There should be a, a moment for that process to take case, that place, that verification process to take place. So absolutely, sending a PDF from a broker that we know sends electronic rate cons, yes, that is an excellent uh, warning sign. And I did not have that in my blog, and I'm going to add it. So thank you, Carlos, because that is a really, really good point. If you know, if you've worked with a broker before, and you know how they do things, and all of a sudden this new person is saying that they work for that brokerage and they're doing things differently, that's a warning sign. Why are they skipping over things in the process? Why are they sending me the rate con in a different way? Why are they sending me the BOL? Why are they asking me to text things? I always email this broker. I never text them anything. Question all of that. Um, and then the another one of uh, that they don't want to speak on the phone. They just want text or email. That can be a tricky one too. If you know a freight brokerage and they really, uh, and you've worked with them a lot and you trust them a lot, there may be just back and forth over email and text, but the vast majority of the time, you're going to talk to them over the phone and you're going to verify things over the phone. You're going to give them updates over the phone. They're really, you can't email while you're on the road, right? You're No one's doing that. You, you have to call, you have to talk to them um, and, and make sure they know who, who you are, where you are, um, and they should be interested in that. They should be thanking you. Thank you so much for all those proactive updates you gave me. That's the sign of a good carrier. So if they are asking, oh, I don't want to talk on the phone. Well, maybe it's because they don't have a phone number that matches the actual freight brokerage's phone number. Maybe it's because their area code is uh, outside the US and they're trying to uh, come off like they're in California when really they're somewhere else overseas or they're in another region of the country altogether. So that is, all of those are such good uh, tips um, and, and signs. Thank you so much, Carlos, for, for including those. Rick, I have a, another question um, for you. Uh, what kind of advice do you have for people working with dispatchers? Let's say I am not dispatching my own loads, but I'm working directly with a dispatcher who is finding loads for me. Um, how do I protect my business in that case? That, you, you know, that's a, a, another excellent question, right? I, I am a big proponent that if you are an owner operator, uh, you should be finding your own loads. You shouldn't give up 8%, 10% uh, to a company uh, that's offering your loads. Uh, again, protecting yourself is what, what are they, what are they uh, promising you? What are they getting you? And again, what are the things that you need to look for? For example, one of the tricks that the the uh, the um, that is used 
is when you're talking to either a dispatcher or a broker, right? And if this is a brand new relationship that you're trying to establish. And they say to you, look, send me your, your carrier package so that we can make sure that you're good, right? And again, this is a trick. So you go ahead and you do your thing. You send in the paperwork. Then they, within like 10 minutes, they call you and they go, hey, guess what? This load became a priority. And I told you it was 3000 but right now it's 3750 So don't worry about it. I need you to go get this and pick it up, right? Anytime you see sudden changes or anytime you see increases in rates, Within a matter of even a couple of hours, is it's a huge red flag. Even if uh, sometimes the the um, the uh, the freight isn't always double brokered, sometimes the freight is stolen, and uh, the way they do that is they'll say, "Hey, listen, I need you to change the delivery address. I need you to take it somewhere else." Okay, massive uh, issues that we have with uh, uh, unscrupulous dispatchers or other um, carriers that post themselves as brokers. Again, the way for you to make sure that you're doing the right thing is continue to ask questions. You're dealing with dispatchers. Who are you working with? Who are the people that you provided loads with? How long have you been in business? Um, what are the load boards that you're using? All of these questions need to be answered. They cannot be uh, sugar-coated or passed on or, oh, I just been lucky or, oh, I just happened to fi find this load. Stuff that doesn't make sense usually is is not, it doesn't have a good outcome. Absolutely. And I think you're right. I think especially when you're starting out your company, um, having, just relying on uh, a dispatcher to get you loads. First of all, they're taking a pretty big cut. Now, dispatching trucks is not an easy job, so it's not like someone shouldn't get compensated well for that. But when you're starting out your own company, it's really important to create relationships with your customers yourself. So if you have just started out or you're in the first months or you're even the first couple of years of business um, and you're outsourcing, creating those relationships, as soon as that person leaves, even if they're a good dispatcher, even if they're a good service, what are you left with? You don't necessarily have a direct relationship with your customers and that's the, your source of work. So if you are growing and your business is growing and flourishing and you really need a dispatching service, okay, that makes more sense after the first couple of years and maybe you have even grown in the number of trucks that you have and you don't have enough time to dedicate to that. Um, maybe you don't have the resources to have a full-time employee and so you're going to outsource it. That makes a little bit more sense to do it in that sense, but then it has to be someone who's vetted. It has to be someone you trust. It has to be someone who can offer up really good referrals um, for their business and they have to be a really reputable service. Um, don't believe, again, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. If they're saying, yep, I can get you a dedicated lane even though I've only been in business for 15 days, Probably not. You're probably not going to be in the business of having dedicated lanes for at least three to six months after you create your, your operating authority. Um, I'm sure some, you know, maybe somebody in, in the comments will, will prove me wrong and, and they've been doing really great and that's awesome. Good for you. But it's not the case for the vast majority of, of carriers around. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is the relationship between identifying fraud and your factoring service. Now, we can't speak for all factoring services, right? All we can do is, is tell you about our experience with our customers at Bobtail. But in our minds, every factoring service should be well-versed in how to identify fraud and how to identify these um, double brokering scams and how they affect carriers and to be able to help carriers out of those situations. We try as much as we can to get carriers paid for really problematic loads. And the way that we do that the more information that we have about the load, the faster we get that information, the better and the more likely we are to be able to get you paid for that load. So if you're factoring with Bobtail and you get the paperwork for a load and there's even the slightest little tinge of a feeling that something is not right, send us the paperwork for that load immediately. Tell us, hey, I got this rate con or I just dropped off this load and something doesn't feel right. Can you look into it? 
call us. Call our team. We're always available 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. You can call us. You, If you're factoring with us, you have a dedicated support team who will answer that call and say, um, oh, yeah, okay, uh, we can look into that um, for you. All the information, we got you. Oh, actually, yep, this checks out. It's okay. Send it to us. We'll send it to the to the uh, to the um, broker for for payment, and you can get your get your payments done like that, right? Um, if you wait, if you wait to to invoice um, with Bobtail or with any factoring service that you're using, um, then there's a couple of days that you're waiting, and where the scammer can actually get paid for the load and dip out. So you really need to send that paperwork in as soon as humanly possible. As soon as you have the information for the load, you should be sending it into your factoring service and you should not be sending that paperwork to really anyone else. Um, if you're factoring with somebody, you the factoring company should be able to handle that paperwork for you and to communicate that to the broker. You shouldn't actually have to send it to anyone else. Um, so be so, so careful with that paperwork and. It, and factor your invoices as soon as possible if you're using a factoring service, because it will definitely help you out in the long run. Rick, um, can you talk about the that relationship between um, your relationship with your factoring service and fraud and avoiding scamming loads? Yes, and, and I want to uh, preface, preface that with uh, one thing in regards to the broker carrier agreement, right? Whenever you're dealing with a new broker, you have to, they need to provide you with a broker carrier agreement. Okay. That's the step that has to happen. You cannot move, should not move, be in business with a broker that doesn't send you a broker carrier agreement. That broker carrier agreement has to have a clause specifically dealing with double brokering. Okay, where it says it is illegal for you to take this load and give it to somebody else, et cetera, et cetera. If those Clauses are missing. If you look at the broker uh, uh, carrier agreement and you see that it doesn't address double brokering, I mean, like really start asking questions like, why don't you have this? Okay. In regards to the factoring side, number one, and again, I don't, we don't speak for all the companies. So we'll, we'll, we'll speak to you about what Bobtail does. Um, we deal with a lot of brokers. Uh, and we have a credit rating that is available for you uh, to see if you sign up for our factoring. So what we do is uh, we provide you with, um, with an app where you sign in and you can type in the MC number and then uh, you will get a message right away that says, uh, yes, we will factor the load from this specific broker. Uh, we also can provide you with a phone number. If you don't want to log into the app, you just text uh, the MC number, uh, and then within a matter of seconds, uh, you'll it will it will send you a message to say yes or no. We do have a requirement: the broker needs to be in business for at least one year, and they have to have a good credit rating. Okay, um, we uh, we get calls from people. Oh, I have this new broker. He just started. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Please, Adam, Adam. Um, we've been down those uh, roads before and it's never turned out good. Uh, so we're um, providing the service to protect ourselves, but also really to protect you uh, when you're dealing with uh, brokers that you're, you don't know, that you're not familiar with. And the same goes for uh, brokers. They do the same thing, right? 100%. With carriers. A lot of brokers, um, you'll know if you've been if you've started your own trucking company yourself, you'll know that a lot of brokers won't work with new carriers. And the reason for that is that scams and fraud don't just affect carriers. They affect carriers a lot and probably more than any other group, but they also affect brokers. You've got stolen freight, um, people double brokering your loads so you don't know where they are. So really good, strategic, experienced Freight brokerages understand the risks of working with brand new authorities, and they typically avoid it. That's why when you're first starting out, you're probably working with brokers like TQL and Landstar, those big companies that have a lot of resources to pad their margins and uh, deal with that level of risk. Um, and so that's why you know brokerages are doing that. They're not working with new carriers. 
carriers should be doing the same thing. They should be hedging their risk and not taking freight from brand new brokers out there that may or may not be legitimate. Um, so that's a, a really good point, Rick, and uh, thanks for bringing that up. We're going to um, move on and, and if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Um, let us know if you've seen other signs of uh, scams or fraud. Really important that we make sure that we're sharing all of the information we can with each other because we're only going to end fraud in trucking together. Um, if you are the victim of a scam, we hope that you never are because it can be devastating to your business. But if you are, you should be doing these things. The first is if you're factoring with Bobtail, please call us. Call us, we can help you try and get paid for the load if it's possible. It may be too late, but it could be possible. Um, and if um, even if not, and there is some kind of chargeback or you're not going to be able to factor the invoice, um, there are things that we can do to help help you out and be flexible and work with you on those on those issues. Um, the next thing that you need to do is file a police report. Hey, Jose, thanks for, for joining us again. I uh, love that little wave. Uh, if you want to turn on your camera and and, uh, and wave at us, definitely wave back. Love it. Um, but definitely file a report, uh, a police report. The police may not be able to do anything about it if it's not in their jurisdiction, but just filing the report and having that paperwork can bolster a claim with the real broker or the real shipper. So if you're just saying, if it's just your word saying, oh, I was scammed and you need to pay me for this load, it's bolstered by having a police report. Um, definitely report the incident to the FMCSA and the DOT. Um, there's an office of the inspector general with the DOT. Um, we know that these systems and this bureaucracy does not work as quickly as we would like them to. Uh, we know that they are very behind in getting people's uh, scammy OMCs off of um, off of their out of their database and uh, marked as scammers. Um, but the losses due to fraud have become so great that even bigger carriers and bigger brokerages have been lobbying the government to get involved and be more involved. Um, and so hopefully this will change, um, but it will only change if we keep reporting incidents. Again, if you're factoring with Bobtail, call us because we can help you file these reports. Uh, then try to contact the real freight brokerage. So if you got it double brokered, let's say they were pretending to be Landstar, call Landstar. Don't send that paperwork to whoever you were talking to. Call Landstar, say, hey, I did this load, this is what happened, this uh, carrier double brokered it to me, um, what can we do? Um, and also, if you're not able to do that, try to contact the shipper. If you can, um, you shouldn't be jumping uh, and, and skipping over the brokerage in any other case, but in the case of fraud, um, there are uh, policies in place that um, hold the shipper responsible for paying that load. Um, in some scenarios. So that may be a possibility for you. Also notify your insurance if applicable, definitely notify the load board. Again, load boards can be really sort of big mammoth organizations that don't work very quickly. But if you report things, the more people report things, the quicker those scamming brokers will get taken off of those load boards. And again, your factoring company, if they're a good company, especially if you're factoring with us, Again, we've already said, give us a call, but if you're factoring with someone else, they may be able to, to help you um, get out of that situation. And finally, share the experience. If you have experienced fraud, share it. Share it on your Facebook groups, share it on uh, Trucker's Report, share it on forums, um, write that broker a review, um, let them know what your experience was because the more people that talk about this and the more people that are asking questions and saying things, the better um, the better that this industry will be. And it can feel, um, I know this um, because when something happens to you when you're the victim of a crime, which this is, um, it can feel really devastating and it can feel really um, embarrassing. And I think a lot of people don't end up reporting things and don't end up talking about thing, these things because they're embarrassed that they got um, trapped into something like this. 
know that this you are not the first person that this has happened to. Um, unfortunately, you are the millionth person that this has happened to. And plenty of people have even gone out of business because of it. Um, so the more we talk about it and the more we air out these situations, the better everyone is going to be off. Um, let's talk about how to legitimize your trucking business. Remember that you are not the only uh, party in this industry that uh, needs that is affected by fraud and double brokering. Um, freight brokerages are affected by this. Shippers are affected by this. Your customers are affected by this. And they are always on the lookout for signs of fraud and trying to prevent and protect their businesses too. So how can you help legitimize your business? Well, we already talked about contact information. So you should have a phone number and an, a branded email address that you can use to communicate with all of your customers. Um, if you're using Gmail or Yahoo, uh, we highly recommend that you stop doing that and you buy yourself a beautiful branded uh, email a domain that you can use to contact people and communicate with. That is really important. Another thing you can do is to create a website. Um, I work in digital marketing and I'll tell you right now, creating a website, not that difficult. Create one page. It can have a picture of your trucks, your MC and your contact information. That's it. That's all it has to have. It doesn't have to have even any other pages, but it's just somewhere that if someone was searching for your company, they would be able to find a nice looking web page with your information on it. That's a really great way to legitimize your business. Um, it's also really important to have a nice looking business address. If you're operating from a PO box, for example, that can be a red flag to brokers. And they're thinking, hmm, why don't they have an office? Why don't they have a, a real business address? So having a real business address can, can be a nice perk um, for your customers. Um, and then, uh, of course, I'm a little biased, but having a factoring service that can actually help legitimize your business. They verify your information. We talked about this with the brokers. If a broker has a factoring service and they can verify that, that's a good sign for you to work with them. The same goes for brokerages and brokers, good brokers will check. Hey, do you have a factoring service? Uh, send me the the um, the notice of assignment so I can see that um, and they will check that. They will verify it. They'll call us and they'll um, make sure that they're working with a, a good carrier. Um, and then finally, uh, the documentation that you can provide to your customers on a proactive basis. So don't wait for your customer to ask for things. Hey, I'm missing your certificate of insurance. Hey, I'm missing your driver's license. Hey, I'm missing this and that. Make sure that your carrier packet is complete with all of the information plus some extra information that you can provide proactively, like photos of your vehicles, um, having your VINs listed on your certificate of insurance. Not all insurance companies will list the vehicle identification numbers of your trucks on your certificate of insurance, but you can ask them to do that. That is something that you as a customer of their insurance company can request. And you should be requesting that because then they can, the person that you're working with can go through and cross check to make sure that the vehicle information is the same. So those are some ways that you can legitimize your trucking business. I'd love to hear from people in the comments if you've had um, things that you've done for your business to legitimize yourself in front of your customers and potential customers. What are some of the things that you've done? Um, and I know that I say that I've said this in every event and I promise we're working on it as soon as we can. We are going to come out with a template of a carrier packet that you should have with a checklist of every little thing that should be in that carrier packet. I highly recommend just having a folder on your computer, on your Google Drive, if you're using Google Drive or Dropbox, if you're using Dropbox, have a folder that you can just copy um, with all of the right documents in it. So it should, you know, we'll have a, a checklist of all of those documents that should be in your carrier packet um, so that you can just copy that, copy every single document that's in there and then um, go through and make changes depending on who you're sending it to. Rick is going to talk to you about Bobtail's factoring service, um, but Rick, uh, tell us, why should we choose Bobtail for our factoring service? Listen, it, it, you can choose any factoring company uh, out there. There's, there's so many factoring companies, but you really want a company that's gonna help you eliminate inefficiencies in, in the business, then you select uh, Bobtail, okay? Uh, and the reason for that 
we don't lock you into a long-term contract. And, and that's an inefficiency in itself. If they lock, if, if a company's locking you in, you're stuck unless you pay a very high dollar early termination fee. These uh, are evergreen contracts, which means they auto renew automatically. Uh, that's a huge inefficiency for your business. And we eliminate that right out of the gate. So with us, we know that if we don't do right by you, you go, you're going to leave us. And everyone in Bobtail is 100% committed to your success. This is why we have these meetings. This is why we create these things, because we are 100% uh, uh, vested in your success. And if if you're not successful, then we don't exist. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're interested in our factoring service, um, please hit us up on bobtail.com. Hello at bobtail.com. Um, you can see that that is a branded email address. So it's legitimate, bobtail.com. If it said bobtail at gmail.com, don't email that. That's not a real thing. Um, or just give us a call. Um, and we will can definitely help you out. And if you're already factoring with Bobtail, remember that there we do have a referral program. And if you refer carriers, um, you can get a reward for every carrier that you refer that um, factors $20,000 with Bobtail. Um, so that is a one of a kind referral program in uh, the factoring business. I'll tell you, it's the most generous one out there. Um, so definitely get on your app, find your referral link and share it with your friends or add your friend's information to the referral app and we'll give them a call. Please let us know what your what you thought of this workshop, of this talk that we've just had about avoiding freight scams in this industry. Um, I just want to shout out uh, Carlos Dianes, um, your comments are gold. Thank you so much for participating so much, um, giving us so much more wisdom um, than we had as well. Tell us what you want in the future so that we can continue to improve and tell us the topics that you want to hear more about. We've talked a lot about working with brokers. Um, I'm thinking that maybe a workshop on creating that carrier packet uh, could be a really good one. Uh, so is that something that would be interesting uh, to y'all? Let us know. Um, and we're going to take any questions that we have right now. Um, so if you have questions, definitely put them in the chat. Rick, did you want to add something? Yeah, just before uh, the questions or before we go, uh, if, if thank you so much for joining us. I, I see Jose driving in his truck. I know a lot of you are on the yeah. road, so thank you. Thank you so much. Go to bobtail.com when you get a chance today. Bobtail.com. Um, so what questions do you have? Uh, put them in the chat. Um, I'm actually going to start off with one that we had from the last session that I forgot to talk about, which is what do I do if I'm on the road and I realize that the load is a scam? So we're talking, we've been talking about how to avoid these things, but if you take a load and there's something, you know, maybe you're stopped at, on, on the way to delivering that load and you realize that something is up, what should you do? Um, again, first thing, if you're factoring with Bobtail, call us, send us all the information for it. We will be able to tell you whether or not you can get paid for this load or not. Um, and if you're not factoring with Bobtail still, and you, and you like your, if you're factoring with anyone, you like them, call them, see if they can help you out to identify whether or not it's a scam. Um, and what you're going to do is go through all of that checklist of, um, things that we talked about. And I'll go back to that slide now of what to do if you've been, um, if you've been the victim of a scam. So go ahead and report the incident, Con try to contact the freight brokerage, try to contact the shipper. If you're not able to get a hold of them, notify insurance, load boards, factoring company, um, anything, uh, any relevant parties, make sure that they know about it and share your experience. Um, when you're, once you have the whole situation figured out, obviously you wouldn't want to accuse anyone of fraud if you're not sure that it's fraud, right? Um, but what other questions do you have? Please send them in the chat. I'll leave it open. I have a question. I um, can type, but um, no worries. You know, yeah, can help me out. Of course. My first question is this: basically, is is that a way you can provide us or able to get it together a bunch of brokers that are out of business or there are about to go out of business so we cannot work with those people anymore? That is a great question. I'm definitely going to bring that to our ops department. I know that we do mm -hmm. update our credit reporting um, every okay. uh, every week, I believe. It's very regular that we're updating the credit re reporting. And as soon mm -hmm. as we hear about a, a brokerage uh, reporting uh, fraud, then we update that credit 
uh, that credit okay. rating on our app. Um, so definitely, even if you've worked with a broker before, check the credit rating again, because it could change, right? So that's a really good point because sometimes yeah. brokerages will go for a long time and then they'll go out of business. Uh, maybe you don't hear that they go out of business and someone else is trying to use their company identity in the meantime uh, while, the, while the news gets out and is um, doing bad things with that. Um, but that's a really good uh, question. I'm going to ask our, our uh, operations manager to see if we could um, publish something like that. Thank you. Appreciate really it. Really good question. Uh, would love to know your thoughts or even if it's not a question, have you ever had an experience with fraud in the industry? Have you ever gotten caught up in a scam? What was that like? Um, or have you heard about people getting caught up in a scam? Uh, that's going to be me. I almost got caught up in a scam yesterday. Ooh. I was in Oklahoma. I, I, was, I called for the law. I pick my loads by myself and uh, i called this company was the name of the company is one name of the uh, trucking company and the bottom was a different name of the uh, the broker i called uh, it was one of those like you say it, it seems like too much money for so little oklahoma to san antonio 2400 pounds paying like 13 1400 dollars i was like yeah that sounds good i called them it was like yeah sure no problem got our paperwork guys all set up it was a military base from one place to another place call and the person that answered the phone on a military base is like no that lot has been canceled no way you can get it wow so and then talking with that person was he was just more like uh open mind like start talking about it and i was like hey i got a question man how much you really paying for that load so he's like we only paying six hundred dollars and there it i is. was like what so i was totally disappointed so i kind of stopped her way through i called these people that the broker Never answer the phone anymore. Yeah, no kidding. I was like, oh my goodness. It, it's so easy how they scan us. So yeah. easy how to scam it. So But that's a re that was a really good warning sign that something didn't match, right? You had one name right. at the top, one name at the bottom. And that's actually something I, I didn't mention. We see a lot, and I get from our uh from Donovan Reed, who's the uh manager of our red team, which is the the team uh part of the team that's always um, processing invoices. I'll get screenshots from him sometimes during the day of saying, hey, check this out. This is a this is a uh, scam load. Um, see what this looks like. Um, and sometimes it'll have different names. Sometimes like on the BOL, it'll say who the brokerage is. And if that's not the brokerage that you were talking to, uh-oh, that's, that's a red flag. You need to be calling them. You need to be talking to them. Another one is if uh, fonts are off. So if you have, um, let's say it's an ID number uh, for the load or it's, or it's some kind of identification number or code that's on the load, if it has a bunch of different fonts in it, that's going to look, that's weird. That, that should be a red flag. Take another look at it. It's probably been doctored. And they do that because they have the real information, right? And so they're sending you something so that it looks slightly different um, and that, and, and so that you don't have the exact right information of it. Um, so that's another, another big sign. Well, thanks for uh, sharing that. Jose, I'm really glad you didn't get caught uh, in a I in just a got one situation. More, Good one for more, you. Right. I got one more thing to edit though. Yeah. The other way to eliminate frogs is when you get your bill of lady, you got to make sure you got your name of the company, your company name, your driver's name, and all your information in the bill of lady. Yeah, because if you do not have that information, you have zero zero chances to get paid. Absolutely, absolutely. And I hear people hopping like that though, so it's kind of sharing something what I hear, what I see. That's really really good point. We've talked a lot about paperwork, but we didn't really talk about the details of a POD or BOL. Um, one of the ways that you can see it is if you have all of your information on there. Different companies handle paperwork differently, too. Um, one of the things that you should be doing, and we get too many of these BOLs coming in without signatures and without the carrier's information on it. Um, and that often, first of all, if you're not signing your BOLs, then we can't factor the invoice until we've gotten your signature. So that's gonna, it's going to hold up your payment either way. So just do it. If, if not to uh, prevent fraud, just do it to get paid quicker. Um, and second, um, sign your name Make sure your MC number is on there. Make sure the date and time is on there. Make sure the um, that you have written all of your company information, your company name, driver name, all of that stuff should be on the BOL. If it's not there, write it on there. 
and write it on there somewhere where it can't be easily edited. Now, you don't want to cover up important information on the BOL. That's also going to lead to some delays. But it's so important to have that information on there. And if it's not, and you've already delivered the load, write it on there before you send us the paperwork. Because in if it's there and we see and we can catch that this was double brokered, we can go back to the freight uh, the freight brokerage that originally brokered the load. And we could say, hey, look, I have proof that my guy delivered this load. Our customer delivered this load and here's the proof of it. His um, stuff is written on there. One uh, a tip in here was to take photos of the freight too and have evidence that you were the one that delivered that load. Um, so if you see anything different on the BOL and make sure that if you're not the one delivering the load, maybe you have a driver, maybe you have a couple of trucks and there's a couple of other people driving for you. Make sure that they know all of these warning signs too, especially with paperwork. They should be, can be really annoying to have to do this. You've been waiting forever to get unloaded. You're frustrated. Uh, you're ready to get out of there. Just have them take 60 seconds and read through the BOL to make sure all the information looks good really good point. Yep. All right. We're up on time for today. So thank you again so much to everyone who connected. Thank you to everyone who is watching the recording here on YouTube. Um, we are so uh, thrilled uh, to be able to do these um, sessions for free. If you liked it, join our Facebook group. Um, definitely join our Facebook group and you'll always hear about the new sessions that we're doing. We're trying to do this every other Friday. Um, and we will likely do this um, topic one more time and then we will move on to a new topic. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for contributing today and uh, we will see you in the near future.